By definition, engineering is a creative activity because uh, everything you, you design, you draw, has some spark of creation in it. Engineers uh, touch virtually everything that we appreciate within our design world, from bridges to our homes, uh, to roads, to transport infrastructure, to the most fantastic buildings, most celebrated buildings that we experience. Um, engineers have, have played a part, um, and often they are our unsung heroes of the design world. Engineers are incredibly creative. They're responsible for innovations, inventions, and the advancement of technology uh, that uh, actually helps to inform global ideas and global infrastructure. Here we meet some of the world's leading engineers and some of the groundbreaking projects that they've been responsible for. Arup is a global consulting firm that really specialises in the built environment. We focus in my team on two different areas. One we call sustainable infrastructure and the other is about resilient cities and communities. We're working with the World Bank at the moment and that programme is called the Global Programme for Safer Schools. And the reality is that there are hundreds and thousands of classrooms being built around the world every day. Um, but those, the design of those classrooms, the way they're built, is not necessarily taking account of the hazards they're going to face. And I'm talking about hazards like earthquakes, but also cyclones. And so we actually dig down and find out what are the issues that mean schools aren't being built safely. So we then can be creative and go the next step and say, what changes do need to be made in those countries in order to get to safer schools? What I really enjoy about my job as a structural engineer is getting to understand what the requirements of the brief are from the client's point of view, what the aspirations of the architect are, what sort of aura the project should have, and trying to work out what are the best structural solutions that satisfy those requirements. For the Millennium Wheel, quite clearly from the beginning, one of the main objectives was to have something that would bring delight. It gave people a chance to see London in a way that ordinary people just couldn't, you know, unless you happen to work in the top of a tall building or fly over the city, you would never see it. And we also knew that it had to be beautiful, that when you look at it you must smile, and the fact that the, the glass is doubly curved and glints in the sunshine is really important. There's quite a few projects that I've been involved with which I think are all about bringing delight. Very often it is to do with the views that you can get, um, certainly it's to do with comfort. All of these kinds of humane aspects, which I think we all know about, it's common sense really, but it's great if we keep, keep reminding ourselves of it while we're designing. So we started in 96 as a single disciplinary design engineering practice and started to get inspiration from actually entering the gaps which we consider to be linguistic, technological and aesthetic. So we added these other dimensions to the scientific discipline of structural engineering. Peckham Library is a, is a very small building but the key idea to that was to make it very interesting as a building so that children at the age of nine would enter and would love the object, the building as an object. So internally it's very playful, it is lifted off the ground to create a new public square underneath and then held up on very spiky spindly columns that act also for uh, wonderful for skateboarding around and it's a public space with public square. It definitely dealt with more than the scientific aspect of structural engineering. We remain inspired by solving 
problems that are beyond the, the average of what is expected of structural engineers. The appeal of being a structural engineer is that our designs get turned into physical big things that people can see, feel, appreciate and inhabit. And, and that's something that's incredibly rewarding to have something tangible to show for our work. The V&A's Exhibition Road building project is a redevelopment of an existing courtyard within the museum in South Kensington. And we've created a 15 metre deep basement in between several grade one and grade two listed buildings. In the basement, we have um, a column free 1,100 square meter gallery floor space, and that will be used for temporary exhibitions. The architectural design is very exciting. We have a steel truss um, structure, which spans across the temporary exhibition space. And then on top of all of that is a new courtyard and entrance. So visitors will be able to come in from Exhibition Road in a way that they haven't really been able to do previously. It's going to create a completely new relationship with the public. I like to get stuck into understanding how things will be built. Um, we produce designs and we do a lot of maths and analysis and drawing and things, but ultimately what we design has to be built by real people and um, a good understanding of that, I think, is, is important so that we aren't just putting things theoretically on a piece of paper. It's actually something that can be built um, and can be built um, safely and, and efficiently. I uh, joined Arab in 1950. Uh, uh, the firm was then called Oberappen Partners and uh, in 1961 Oberappen Partners had been appointed for the, they were appointed to be the engineers for the Sydney Opera House, although in effect they only did the structural engineering and the civil engineering and I was asked to handle the thing and take it over and led the uh, design of the project, the engineering design, uh, from then onwards until completion. The challenges uh, was to, to design a structural form which was extraordinary with very rudimentary tools by current standards. It, it was very much a, a developmental era where one was developing ideas, uh, methods, systems. One was really working at the frontiers of what was possible in our industry. <laughs>